Hi, uh, we are going to talk about your practicum for the calendars. And this is not really hard to do, but the instructions look kind of complicated, so I thought I'd do a pre-Zoom uh, session here. However, if after looking at this video, you have more questions or more concerns on how to do this assignment, please do not hesitate to email me or call me and um, we'll either talk about it or I will do a private Zoom session with you to make sure that you can get through this assignment and understand it well. Because you're, you're programming and providing the right programs for the right people at the right time is, is essential to having um, good participation and also is essential to passing your survey. So that's why this session is so important. So we will get started and um, I will go through the forms that you're going to have to fill out to, to complete this assignment and I'll try to make it as clear as possible. Before we start on that though, I want to share one thing with you that I have learned that has been very important in order to understand who I should bring down to group and what groups I should put them in. So there is a form on your in on your appendix in your appendix section so if you scroll down to um, content then scroll down to about the fourth um, category on the uh, right hand excuse me the left hand side it'll say appendix if you go in that appendix you'll find on page nine this form and this form i found has been very helpful to me to understand who I should bring down to groups and when. And so instead of switching, switching back and forth to the, the whiteboard, I will hold it up in, um, in the screen here so that you can see it and point out some of the things on it. But know that it is on page nine of your appendix. So let's look at that first. So that'll help you understand uh, who you should bring down to group and how to get them all there. Okay, so this form has been really helpful and What it basically is is uh, It's called activity assessment need form and I found this form in one of my advanced uh, Studies and I found it to be very very helpful So I'm gonna block myself off here for a minute and just put the form up and what this does is it allows you to put everybody's name down here under the category that they would fit under. So down here we have independent people that want to come to group. We have people that are in the, that want to come to groups, but they're going to need some setups and help, and they have maybe mild con uh, con cognition. Then we have a group here where people don't want to come at all, and then you have your skilled people who will probably come to some things but mostly they're going to want to do things in the room and they might be refusing. And then it goes on to the different categories here. This one at the back will explain that if they have a secondary language that is not English, you want to put them over here so that you make sure that you know that they are going to have some communication problems. Also listed underneath this one is um, people who uh, are very young, under 65 and they may need special groups. And so you can look at these other categories and you may decide to make a chart like this for yourself and add your own categories. But I thought it was important. The best way to use this chart then is write everybody's name in pencil and put them under one spot. That way you'll know how many people are active and want to come to group, how many people coming to the group are going to need some help, how many people are going to be refusing and that's why you should be maybe doing more one on ones with them. So each group gives you a special category and down here we have comatose people and some other special need people. So this will tell you if you write their name one time of, over the group that they are most likely to fall into. Then you can see how many people you need to bring down to groups, how many people you're going to have one on ones. How many people are going to be just uh, uh, doing their own private projects in their room because they're self-directed. So it'll give you a good sense of who to bring and when to bring it. And I'm saying write it in pencil because what will happen is these people will change. If they've been there for a while and all of a sudden they start to develop some uh, cognition problems, they'll come to this group. 
or maybe they came in here and now they they are they uh, have gone out and they've come back in again but this time they came back in and they're skilled and they're only they are only going to be there for a couple of days or two weeks at the most so you want to put them in this category so do it in pencil so that you move your people around and give them the category that they best fit in and this will give you a clear view of how many one-on-ones you need to do how many groups you're going to be running how many special needs people you have so that'll be really helpful in getting your calendar set up and getting them set up right so i just wanted to share that with you because it's kind of important for you to know who you got and what are the what are their interests and what are their um their uh their needs or their special needs now the next thing and this starts our assignment for the calendars the first thing that i want you to do on the calendar is fill out this master planner sheet and i'm going to put this up here so you can see it we'll go over it and what this does it allows you on one whole page to put down exactly what you would like to accomplish in one entire year and this is important because at the end of uh, the month when you have to do your calendars it is really hard to get everything in there that people have asked you to do or people, or things that you want to do that will be important to your residents. So that's why I made up this one sheet where at the end of the month I can look at and say, hey, these are the things I need to get on the calendar this month. And this is why. So I would like you to turn in your book to page six. Oh, no, excuse me, page three. And under page three, we have listed for you the different types of activities that you have to get into your programming. And the first thing that we're going to start out now, the, the three groups that you're going to have to get into your programming are your empowerment groups, which allow for creative expression. You're going to have to get your maintenance groups in because they uh, provide continuation of skills or to help maintain the skills that they do have, whether they're cognitive or physical or spiritual. And then the third group is supportive groups. And these are your one-on-ones. Remember, these are one-on-ones that can be used for either high-level people or low-level low people. So if they're high-level, I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one because they want to do something self-directed in the room and they didn't want to go to those groups. So I'm going to be doing one-on-ones with them. If they're low-level and I'm doing a one-on-one, -on -one, it's because they need the sensory stim their supportive maintenance because they don't want to come out of the room or when they come out of the room, they get too anxious because of the dementia and it's causing too much confusion. So I need to go in and do one on one things with them or make sure that I have them in the dining room and I can come to them and do some one on ones there in a very small group so they don't get agitated. So those are the three groups that we'll be working with, and those are the three groups that your surveyors will be looking for. So let's get them posted up here so that we can remember to put them on the calendar. This first section here is a requirement because every month we want to have some special party or some special event to signify or, or help um, develop traditions like the holiday or Mother's Day and Father's Day and Fourth of July and those things. So providing people with a normalization of their life that will follow the traditions that they are interested in. So it might be up here on the first one. You're going to have a New Year's Eve day party. And uh, you'll do that day. And then in February, you're going to have Valentine's Day. And you have um, probably um, Black History Month or Martin Luther King Day. Sometimes in February is Chinese New Year, so you might want to put that in there. And so you'll go down and on each month, there'll be certain things that you want to make note of. And um, the, only, uh, the only month that doesn't have anything is August. So that's when people will usually do a, um, a Western Day or a Hawaiian Luau or have a special concert out in the garden or something like that. But all the rest of the all the rest of the month have a certain holidays or things that we traditionally look at. Now, this also means that if you have people in your building that are uh, 
uh, very diverse, you want to make sure that you had, had add in those different holidays that would be important to them. And uh, for example, Botswana, uh, Boxing Day, Hanukkah, all that happens in December. So you want to make a list of that, make sure that you get those things on that calendar. And in September or October, I think, Rashanina Day, and that is a Muslim celebration of harvest, oh no, the Jewish celebration of harvest, and which is a little different than uh, what we do in November for Thanksgiving. So you want to make sure that you have um, your diversity of holidays listed here so that you can catch everybody who needs to have that type of celebration. And um, that is important to do. This next column right here, I want you to go down and mark what entertainer you want to hire for or remind yourself uh, to, if you see March coming up, you want to make sure you're going to have maybe a St. Patrick's Day and you might want to have a band that, it is, that you would probably hear in an Irish pub. And I will tell you right now, if you're doing that, you need to book that like eight weeks in advance. So as you look down your calendar, oh, St. Patrick's Day is probably coming up. I better call this number and mark it in because it's coming up in the next six weeks. And if I want to get somebody to come, I have to do it in advance. So that'll help you to remind you to do, to make the calls that you need to do to get the special people to come in for these events. Now, that takes care of that and that takes care of the whole year. The next thing that we want to look at in these next two columns here, we want to set up a system for ourselves so that we can figure out when to get our empowerment groups in and when to get our maintenance groups in. So empowerment groups will go in here and these are our daily features that we want to put on the calendar and these are going to include all, all, all our self-expression activities. So you want to look down at on page three and look under empowerment groups. I've given you a list of a whole bunch of things that you could put in there and you might say okay on Monday we are going to have afternoon crafts. Or on Monday, maybe you're going to have music. And on Tuesday, you maybe have a cooking group. Or maybe you'll have a poetry group. And on Wednesday, you're going to set up so that that might be a Bible study time. Or that might be your church sermon. And you want to go down here and make sure that you list all the things that you want to put on there on that particular day of a group that you want to run. So you might have music maybe two times on here. One might be name that tune and the other one might be uh, appreciation of music. Or you might have a classical thing on Friday afternoon or travel log. So this is what you want to do. You want to make sure that you put these empowerment groups and you make sure that you put them on the same day so that when you have it posted there, people know, oh yeah, that's the day that we have bingo, or that's fast bingo, or high level bingo, and that's on Tuesday, and I want to go to the one that's, uh, that's just regular bingo on Thursday. So um, you want to make sure that you, you post them on the same day. So if you have cooking on Tuesday, make sure you have cooking in the afternoon on Tuesday. Maybe you want to repeat it twice, and you're going to do it on Sunday afternoon after church, a small cooking group. Whatever you do, you want to make it make it consistent. So make sure you list all the creative groups that you want to put on there and that you're going to be running every day or excuse me, once a week or twice a week. So you might have a liter literary uh, group book discussion on Tuesday and then maybe on Thursday you might have a poetry group. So um, you have to decide where you're going to put these so that they're consistent. So look at that list and make sure that you get things listed. There'll be occasion when you only want to do certain groups like, like twice a month. And we'll put those over here in the maintenance section. So the next thing that we want to look now at is our maintenance groups. And when we do maintenance groups, look at the list and you'll see there's there are quite a few of them that we can put on there. And maybe three times a week, you're going to have exercise group. Or maybe four times a week, you'll have exercise group. So post it there. Or maybe three times a week, you can do one-on-ones. -on or you're going to do self-directed visits. So make sure that you post these things that you want to get done 
and make sure that you get them on there. And maybe there'll be quite a few of them. Uh, not quite a few, but a couple that are really important that you want to maybe only do once a month. And that might be it. Might be have a special horticultural therapy group where you're going to look at horticultural things and everything that we've done in the garden. Maybe you only want to do that once a month. Maybe you'll have a, a plant hospital where you're going to collect the plants that are dying in the building and you're going to you're going to fix them up and once a month you're going to go over there and uh, and bring all the plants down and you're going to go do the plants and trim them back or add fertilizer and water and stuff like that. So or maybe you're going to do that twice 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 a month. Um, and uh, then the last one down here. Oh, uh, we also, I put on here already for your resident council, because that has to happen once a month. And then also birthday parties. Now, sometimes anymore, we don't have to have big birthday parties, but you do have to celebrate birthdays. So you might want to say, okay, twice a week, we're going to celebrate birthdays and go down to the, the lunchroom and make sure that they get a card and everybody sings happy birthday to them. And, um, or you may decide that you only do that once a week. If you do it only once a month, then sometimes I run a bingo game with it and do a bingo birthday. Have everybody sit at a certain table or have a special party where everybody comes down to the dining room and we play music or we play name that tune or we give out drawing gifts, raffle gifts, and then we celebrate everybody's birthday on, on that month. So either way that you do it, it's fine. But this is where you're going to place all those maintenance groups that, that you need to do. Now, you will find sometimes that people are coming down to groups for different reasons. Sometimes they're coming down to a cooking group because they want to have self-expression and they want to do something creative. Other times they're going to come to that group because you're going to be reminding them that they need to learn sequencing. So I might have somebody at that group who needs sequencing at the cooking group and they will be reading a recipe or they will be telling us how or when to add certain things into the recipe to help them with sequencing. Or they might be coming to that group because they have adaptive equipment and they have an enlarged handle that they're going to be using to stir things or remember how to use tools. So sometimes these groups can blend together and that's perfectly fine. But make sure that when they come to these groups, if they came there for self-expression and they want to jazz up the recipe and add extra things, then that's that's what they're going to do. Or they wanted to make this because they have a special recipe. That's that's what they're there for. Sometimes other people will be there just to learn how to re reuse their tools, reuse their hands, um, to remember uh, when we bake cookies, how, how what's the degree? Is it 450 or is it 250 or is it 350? So people will come to the groups for different reasons, but you still have to get them listed there so you remember. This is how many times I'm going to do one-on-ones. This is how many times I'm going to do exercise. This is how many times I'm going to have discussion groups or um, uh, socials. And people will come to socials for different reasons. So you can put them in both spots, but make sure that if, there's, if it's a social group and you have some low-level people that may not fit in that group, you're going to run a special social group for those lower level people who need more cueing or more redirection. So that'll help you set up those groups. The next thing down here, we have different things that will be given to us by people because they want to have it done. And um, one of the things that we have in here is community projects. So I want to make sure that um, maybe the Easter Bunny is going to come. So I want to mark that in. Or Santa Claus, I want to schedule Santa Claus to come um, during Christmas week. Or I'm going to do a special project to raise money for um, Alzheimer's, and we'll do a special project there. Or maybe I'm going to have a um, person who's running for a political office, and they're going to come in and do a speech. So these are all special things that I would want to get on my calendar during certain times of, of the year. The next one is somebody might bring me a special craft group that they want to do. So they'll give me instructions on it. Well, I'll make sure I get that done. Maybe they want to tie-dye shirts out in the garden or, or they want to make jewelry. So if they have a special thing that, that's been suggested to me and I want to make sure that I get it done. Or if they bring in a special recipe, I want to make sure, okay, 
we're gonna do that. This is John Snickerdoodle cookies and he and Martha wants him to make this with this recipe. So I wanna get it on my calendar. So these categories help me to remind what I'm doing and, or, or what I have the possibility of, of putting on the calendars. Um, sometimes I'll come up with new ideas and new things instead of, well, we always do Mother's Day. Let's do Cinco de Mayo also that month. And I hesitated for a while to do that because I thought it was too many holidays. I thought, but the time that I started putting Cinco de Mayo on when I had so many people that were of um, Spanish and Mexican uh, diversity, uh, I had so much help putting on that Cinco de Mayo party. They brought in piñatas. This is what we should do. This is what we should feed on, feed them at the party at that day. So let your staff or your family members come in with ideas, and you'll get a lot of help because it's a new, new fresh idea, and it adds sparkle and spice and and things that people want to do. We're making it person-centered when we when we honor their suggestions. And then, of course, people give you a certain outings. Oh, I'd like to really go to the beach. Okay, well, we can go to the beach, but I gotta get it special. And it'd be better if we do it in June when it's not, or later June when it's not raining and when we, when it's not the heavy rains of, of the beginning of spring. Let's do it in August. So it'll help remind you what you're doing and when you should be doing. So that's what this form is for. It's to help you at the end of the month when you're tired and you gotta start putting things on that calendar. And you'll have suggestions from people, and I'll be very helpful to you. So that's why I suggest that you do that. And then on the next page of your assignment that we're going to do is we're going to fill out an ideal week. So you're going to look at this one that we just filled out, where you put in all these things that you wanted to get done. And now we're actually going to assign them a time on the calendar. Now, you will notice your calendar runs Monday through Sunday. It's seven days a week. And that is required by, by not by the state of Oregon, but by the federal government that you have programmed seven days a week. So make sure that on each day you have at least three to four groups, plus your rounds and your one-on-ones, your exercise groups, your maintenance groups and stuff, uh, and make sure that you get them all included and make sure that it happens every day of the week. Now, Saturday and Sunday will be a little bit lighter simply because you'll have family members visiting more on that day. You also have to do evening activities. Evening activities are considered 30 minutes after the first dinner hour. So many times on a Wednesday night, I would put either an evening music uh, uh, movie or I would have evening bingo. And so I would start it after uh, the high level dining room session and the people would be there and we clean off the tables and we start our bingo group. Or sometimes in the evening, I would just gather people down in the um, Uh, TV room in the in our in our activity room, and I would serve wine and cheese, or um, we would have pizza and football game. But I would start something in the evening, and I did not always have to stay for the entire day. I would serve people, make sure that they were all set, let the aides know where everybody was. I would leave extra food at the nurses' station in case they wanted to pass out more. And I would get them started for 30, 40 minutes. And by then, uh, with the wine and cheese, everybody was done. Or if they were, they started watching the movie, if it was a movie night, movie matinee night, they'd start watching it together. And then, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'll finish watching it on TV. Because I could run it on Channel 10, which is our, our channel um, in the building. What I want you to remember about these groups in the morning you want to run all your maintenance groups because that's when your lower level people are more alert and they can handle that group. And then in the afternoon when the groups are smaller after two o'clock, run your empowerment groups because they'll be smaller groups and empowerment groups does, it takes more time to set them up, to help them uh, get through the project, whether it's an arts uh, project or a painting project or um, a cooking project sometimes. 
So um, you want to make sure that maintenance groups go in the morning, empowerment groups go in the afternoon. You'll have your best attendance at that at that point. And when you set up your groups, make sure that your maintenance groups run about 30 minutes. No longer than 30 minutes because they'll get tired and they need to move around. So what will happen is you'll go around and you'll get people and bring them down to that first group. And then by the time, let's say your first group is an um, exercise group. And then some people say, oh, well, the next group is um, music. I don't want to stay for music. So you're going to let people go or start them down the hallway. And then by the time they that happens, everybody, the aides have gotten more people up. And they will say, oh, well, they're running activities. I'll take so-and-so down. And so they'll bring them down. So we'll recircle the group and we'll pull people, pull the chairs out and say, oh, well, we're done with exercise. Now we're going to move the tables and we're going to do um, uh, a music session. And we're going to name that tune. Or we're going to do nails. And then after the nails are done, they'll say, oh, well, I, I, I don't want to do the, I don't want to do the, 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 uh, the next group. I'm going to go back to my room and get ready for lunch. So people will come and go out of these first four groups. So run them at 30 minutes and give them time to set up. Get everybody set up. Tell them what they're going to do. Run the group. Thank them for coming. Allow people who don't want to stay for the next group to leave or bring in the people that the aides have brought down for the second or third group and incorporate them and go through the same process again. That will bring you right up to about 1130. And right at 1130 is a good time when you will, um, most of your high level people will go to their dining room and the lower level people, you can group up and have a memory group session with them. Um, and it's more of a sensory stem that the high level people would not enjoy. And so you'll do a memory, a one on one sensory stem session with them. And you can go from table to table to table, getting it done in that way. In about 30 minutes, you can do one-on-ones in small groups with people, and you'll probably be able to reach about 10, 12 people uh, by the time you run three three small groups for 10, 15 minutes and talk about the sensory stuff. Okay, and then your afternoon groups. I like to give myself a little break so that I get lunch and have time to record um, the morning activities. And I usually start my activities about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That way, if I have a larger project, I can have that, uh, that group run for 40 or, or an hour by the time we clean up from a, uh, a craft project or something. So these sessions will be a little bit longer. And maybe you'll have two sessions in, in, in the afternoon. So three or four sessions in the morning, small groups. Um, or your maintenance groups, which will run for 30 minutes, and then maybe an hour, and then maybe a bingo game in the evening, or you're going to start a movie just before dinner or something like that, So, or travel along. So that, that those are your, your self-expressions. Now, that's really good, and what I want you to do is set up your ideal week so when a surveyor looks at it, they'll look and say, oh, they got crafts, oh, they got literature, oh, they got music, oh, they got exercise groups, oh. They have outings. Oh, so everything is on there to have an ideal week that the surveyors will be marking you off for or checking for. Now, the next thing that will happen is that the, the end of the month, you also have extra things to do. But before the end of the month comes, you usually ran that special party, one that we talked about where you have to do once a month, or some special event where maybe you had music in. And those events take more time to set up. So when you have a day that you have a special event, I'm going to, to strongly suggest that you take out some of your regular activities that you posted on that day. So what I would like you to do, now that you've filled out this ideal week calendar, pick one day off of your ideal week. And then down here, I want you to put on, how would you rearrange that, I, that day for a special event? So in other words, if I had exercise on Tuesday morning and uh, nails and music group, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change. I might do exercise in the morning, and then I'm going to maybe have a shorter nail session 
and tell those people that I'm going to finish their nails later on in the afternoon if we don't get to everybody. Because now I'm going to close this off and I'm going to go down to the dining room. And right here at 1030, instead of running the 1030 group, I'm going to put in there decorate for party. And I'll have a few people come down and help me decorate for that party, a few residents. But the room is going to be basically closed because I don't want anybody with dementia walking in there and starting to pull down all the decorations or pull the tablecloth. So you want to close that off and give yourself some success time so that you can set up that room so it's nice, bring down all the extra chairs for the extra guests that are coming, and it's ready to go. And then on that day, lunch will be a little bit longer because people will take longer as they visit with family members, which means cleanup time is going to be a little bit harder. So you got to get the decorations down. you got to pull out the extra chairs that you brought in there for the party. And that's going to take some time. So you may close off and not start an afternoon group until maybe 2.30 or 3 o'clock. And then you'll start a group. And so you want to sort of make this day successful for yourself, but also easier. And the worst thing that happens is if you leave something up on the calendar on that special event day and you don't run it, people will be knocking on your door saying, why didn't we have this? It was on the calendar. So on the days that you're scheduling, once a month, when you're scheduling special things that are supposed to happen, make sure that the day that you put it on, you take off the regular stuff that's on the calendar and you put on exercise group, fancy nails, and then set up for party and then say um, decorate for party and you have you, the door will be closed and, and that's special by special invitation for the people that will help you decorate for the party or the volunteers that are coming in. And you set up, then you run the party and everybody is happy to have a special party. So they don't mind that the schedule has been changed. But if you got to post it so everybody knows on that day the schedule has been changed. Okay, so that pretty much covers special events. So be kind to yourself and make sure that you give yourself enough time to run a good event without, without driving yourself nuts by changing some of the things on that day so that people are not disappointed and you have time to run a good party or a good uh, concert or a good barbecue out in the garden, whatever it is. You need time, extra time for that setup. The other time that I'm going to say it's okay for you to change your events is at the end of the month. And I'm giving you permission at the end of the month to change uh, certain things simply because at the end of the month, you have several things that you have to do. And one of them is you have to make your budget. You have to set up a budget. You have to get extra paperwork done for, for the end of the month close. Um, what extra documentation that you have to do. You have to make your calendar. And you have to write a newsletter. So those are four major things. So sometimes twice at the end of the month, I will look at my calendar and I will say, okay, it's the fourth week. I need to get my budget and I need to get set up my newsletter. So I will take uh, a Tuesday and maybe a Thursday. And on the last week or whenever I need to get that paperwork, whatever week I need to get that paperwork done, on those days, I'm going to change it a little bit. So maybe I'll have my exercise group and a chat group. And then I won't. I won't do sensory stim. And I won't do music that morning. I'm taking those off the calendar because I'm going to have a little bit of office time. And so I would, instead of having four groups up here, I will maybe only have two groups up here for that morning. And then I'll run off to my office and I'll get some of that paperwork done. So I'm stealing a little bit of time from the calendar, but I don't feel guilty about it simply because I gave them an excellent three weeks of full activities. And if I need to steal a little time from this day on the last week of the month to get some extra paperwork done so we have a budget for next month, I should do that. So on this, I'm asking you to show me how would you change your day so that you can get some extra paperwork done. And sometimes in the afternoon, it's just easier to um, have 
easier groups to run, things that you don't have to do as much setup for, like putting on a travel log. And I can sit in the back of the room and still do some paperwork and still monitor how the how that travel log is going or make sure nobody um, spilled their popcorn or any or something like that. So sometimes I'll sit in the back of the room with my computer and I'll make sure that I'm watching my people so that they don't have problems or or injuries. But I'm going to close it off a little bit. I'm going to change the calendar and you're going to have to take maybe two or even three days um, out of that week. So sometimes I'll do the, the third week. I'll take one day and I'll start on the budget and, and setting up my new calendars. And then when they're actually due on the last week, I'll, I'll maybe have to have two days where I'll finish that off and finish those projects off on the fourth week. Okay, so I hope that's helpful to you so that you don't stress out trying to do too much at one time to get everything done, that you give yourself some, some success time. The next thing that I'm going to ask you to do, and I have to do this simply because I want to make sure that you looked at some of those videos and that you know how to run groups. And so this little form helps you think out how to run a group. And on this form, I want you to put up here what the group is. So you're going to pick one of the groups that, that you want to run. Maybe it's going to be a cooking group. Maybe it's going to be an arts and crafts. Whatever it is, post it up here. And then we want to think a little bit, what is this trying to accomplish? And if you go back to what we talked about, um, about how the body, uh, how the brain thinks and how it assimilates the different groups, the one-on-one the -on -one sessions and stuff like that, we know that there are a couple things that will happen. They're going to have to have body awareness. So are they going to have to know how to use their body? Yeah, most of them are. Or um, you might say cues that you're going to have to give for people. We can list those down here. And then how to use tools, reality orientation. So this is referring not to time, but to, do they know that this is a cup and I can put liquid in it and this is a straw and I can suck out of it? Or this is a screwdriver and I can put it on the screw and I can screw this in? So we want to know, do they know how to use tools? So what equipment are they going to have to be working with? And the last one is the highest way that the brain thinks and the best way that we can bring up um, uh, or have people remember sense, uh, sensory stem grip is what does it remind them from before? Did it validate them? Oh, I remember making window boxes. I'm so glad we're doing this for our garden. And maybe I've got a group out there and I'm, I'm, I'm not, we're putting together window boxes or flower boxes. Um, or we're doing a craft with wood. So this is the way we want to try to stimulate all time. So start to think, if you put this up here, what, how is this going to be impacted? So start to think about it. So I will have you check that out. And then the next line underneath there, um, physical. What are they going to have to be able to do? Their upper body, their lower body? Is it going to be more cognitive? And um, if it's a modified sport, list that in there, here and there, also list it there. And is it creative? Who will participate? And who will be just there to observe? And so, you know, you might have only three people participating, but you might have 10 people watching it because they're enjoying it. But that's the way it goes. So just think, how is this, how is this activity going to impact the people that I have or that I would bring, be bringing down to that group? Okay, the next thing is what's the duration? I'll tell you right now, don't run a bingo game longer than 40 minutes because they'll start to fight. They'll get very competitive and start to fight. So 30, 40 minutes max. Uh, that's what most groups run, but it, especially um, sometimes they'll go an hour with your with your different setup. So plan for that. If you need extra time for setup, expect the group's going to run maybe 30 minutes. Maybe it's going to run um, an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 30 minutes. So just know that that we need to plan for that. What type of group is this? How much time is the setup going to take? How much time is it going to take to run the group? And size of the group. If it's an arts and craft group, you know what? I only want three, four, five people, six at the most, because I can't help everybody all at once, and they're going to need help as we go through the different steps of the project. 
Okay, so that helps you start to think out what, how, how this group is going to work and what you need to do to make it successful. And then the next thing down here, what are the goals of this activity? So sometimes it might be for creative expression. Other times you're going to have different people down there for maintenance things, maybe sequencing, uh, maybe application of tools. So make a few notes of yourself. What can this group help accomplish when they're down there? What should I be thinking about that, that different ways that I could apply this group to make it more meaningful for the different people that come to it? Okay, then think for a few minutes what physical skills they're going to need. Do they need fine motor skill or is it gross motor skill? Cognitive. Can I cue a couple people and still have them enjoy the group? Or is this too high level? Is it too much of a discussion group? And they're going to get lost or get frustrated. Okay, so be thinking about what's going on. What kind of social skills? And I'll tell you right now, bingo is a good place to practice sportsmanship. Okay, because they get very competitive at bingo. Um, equipment and materials. So what are the standard equipment and material that you'll have to have for this group? If it's a cooking group, bowls, mixtures, um, blenders, frying pans. What equipment are you going to need? What ingredients are you going to need? Make sure you have it listed. Gives you a chance to kind of check it over and say, okay, oh, gee, I better get this too. Or I at my cooking groups always brought down a tub and some water and we washed the dishes while the, everything was cooking. That was helpful to keep things going while we were waiting for the stuff to cook. Okay, and then um, the other thing that you, well, how do you want to set up the room? Are they going to be looking at you in an exercise group? Is everyone going to be in a circle looking at you? Or are you shaped looking at you? Are you going to have them at tables? Or do you have to push the tables together? So know how you're going to adapt the environment and set up your groups. And also down here, equipment used. Also make sure you make a list of any extra things you're going to have to bring adapted equipment whether it's the Velcro strips to attach the bowls to the tables so that they don't spill when they're when they're when a one-handed person is is stirring them if you can't remember what those are go back and look at those videos in the first two lessons and we we already did a lot of adaptive equipment so you'll know what adaptive equipment to bring down whether it's the foam on the utensils so that a person who doesn't have fine motor skill can now close their hand around it. So that's important. And then your leadership skills. Now this comes in three forms. Either you're going to be very nurturing and invite them down and encourage them to come, praise them for what they did. Sometimes you have to use a little bit of tough love and say, well, I know you can do that. Here, give it a try. If you're having trouble, I'll, I'll come back and help. Okay, because sometimes people get what's called learned helplessness, and they don't want to try. We want them at least to try, but as soon as they have trouble with something, I'm going to be right there to make sure that I'm helping them along so that they don't have a problem. Okay, so that's your leadership skills, and I would like you to fill out that form. Just so that I know that you you um, absorb the information that were in a lot of those different videos, so that you can ap really apply your skills in two groups. The next thing we're going to do is you're going to pick something off of the Alzheimer's um, activities that I have listed here, and this is from their circle of life, and these are usually the most activities that they can do, and you're going to pick one activity off of here. And then you're going to show me on the next page how to break it down so that you could apply the skills for somebody who has beginning stage Alzheimer's or mild cognitive problems or somebody who is in uh, middle stage Alzheimer's or somebody who has really has a problem. So let me just take this one and I'll say maybe I put nails. Oh, we're going to paint our nails here. And my first high-level person, they could come down, and I could give them maybe five different colors of nail polish, and they could easily pick out the one that they wanted. I could give them the remover, and they could remove the nails. 
And chances are they probably could paint their nails too. Now they may have trouble painting their non-dominant hand and I would help them with that. But a high level person or a high level Alzheimer's person could probably do those things. They're, they could, they might forget a little bit. I may have to cue them just a little bit. Oh, just sit here and finish. Let your nails dry a little bit more. And you know, they get it and they, they'd be able to work with it. Then the middle person, now they have more cognition difficulties. And if I gave them five nail polish job, jars to pick from, they would be confused. So I'm gonna give them two to pick from. And maybe they can start to take their nail polish off and maybe they'll forget what they're doing. I wanna make sure that I'm there to make sure they don't drink the nail polish. So I'm gonna watch them a little bit more closely and I will probably have them do maybe one of their nails and I'll keep cueing them, but they'll get tired and they won't be able to finish it. So then I'll stop, I'll, 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 I'll ask them to wait. They might get up, walk around, come back and sit down. And I'll say, hey, let me finish your nails for you. And so I would finish their nails for you. And maybe I get to paint them and maybe they wouldn't stay still for that. So maybe the next time I see them when I'm doing nails, I'll say, oh, your nails are ready for nail polish. Let's put your nail polish on. So I may not complete everything in one session, but I can go back to it and know what level that person's at and where the type of help that they're gonna need. Now my lowest level person, low cognition and low functioning, I am probably gonna uh, let them point to what other nail polish they want. And I'm gonna take off their nails with them. I'm gonna paint their nails for them. And I'm probably gonna have to redirect them with a cup of coffee so that they'll stay and be with me. And I might have to, you know, cue them a little bit and say, hey, just stay still. I'm gonna, we're gonna finish your nails. Here, put them underneath the dryer. Doesn't that warm air feel good? So you're gonna have to focus with them really intently to make sure that they can get the group done. One thing, so I'm gonna ask you to pick one group here, then pick another group from the circle of life. So you'll have two different activities and I want you to show me how you can break down their skills so that these people can be, um, functional in this group. And uh, this happens very often because in your Alzheimer's group, you're gonna have high level Alzheimer's where they can do a lot of things and, or most of the things, and then your middle level people and your low level. The way that you can really tell the difference between high, middle, and level is this a little trick that I kind of learned and I hope it will be helpful to you. Your high level person, they can talk to the leader and they can talk to either person on either side. Now, they have no filter, so they might say, oh, is this what we're doing today, leader? Oh, oh, well, that looks like, okay, I, I can do that. And then they might turn to their neighbor and they say, do you like doing what she's saying we're doing? I don't know. It might be okay. Do you like doing that? I don't like doing that. So they'll talk to a person on either side. And remember, they will talk their mind freely. They have no filters, so don't be offended if they say something, if they give you a clue about how they really feel. That's the way it happens. So, and then my very lowest person, my low level person, uh, they're almost semi comatose most of the time. They go off in their own little fog. And that person, I'm gonna have to tap on the shoulder or squeeze, or squeeze their hand to get their attention and talk directly to them. And that's how you know that they're at that state. They really, they sometimes can get very agitated if there's too much stimulation going on. So you, it really is a one-on-one -on -one focus. They can usually sit at the table with everybody else, but um, you have to really focus with them and get their attentions to, to draw them into the, to the group and to get them to do the function. So that pretty much is our calendar assignment. If you have any problems with it or concerns about how to do it, please remember I am available to Zoom with you on a private level or on a small group level if anybody's more people are having trouble with it. It's not really hard to do, but it is gonna take you a little bit of time to think through how do I make an ideal calendar and get all my empowerment groups in, and all my maintenance groups in, 
and develop a dip, uh, a good week. And um, I'm only asking you to do one week and then show me how you adjust it. When you come into the advanced class, you will do a whole month on one calendar and you'll do it for high level um, long-term care people and you'll do one for Alzheimer's and you'll show me a whole month. But in this class, I just want you to show me an ideal week and how you would run it and knowing that you're gonna be blending some groups um, because sometimes uh, that's the way our programs have to work to get everything done. And then make sure that you do that Alzheimer's, um, make sure that you do both the um, calendar planning for Alzheimer's and the calendar planning on how to run the groups. So both these forms. Do one for this, one activity for this, because I'm asking you to explain exactly how you're going to run that group. And then on this one, I want you to do two groups and show me how you're going to break down the skills for the different Alzheimer's people. And once you learn how to do that and get a natural feel for doing that, um, you'll find that programming is very, very easy. And getting to run your groups is easy and fun too. Most of the time it's fun. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's, it's a little bit challenged and it's, it makes you realize, oh, somebody has fallen down a little bit or they lost some of their skills. I better go back and put them in a different group and, and do some different things with them. So again, if you need help, give me a jingle and we'll set up a Zoom session. This practicum is worth 20 points, which is a good portion of your grade. Just like the documentation practicum is worth 20 points. And these are essential for me to give you state certification. So you have to do these assignments. All right. I hope that's helpful and know that I am here to help. All right. Thank you. Thank you.